our last task with the image sampler is to create an undulating surface based off of the image uh, within here. And at this point, we've created a pixelated image. We've created what you're seeing here, which is fins. And we've created this laid out several different ways, vertically on the x, z axis, horizontally on the y, x axis, or now laid out on the x axis, but moving in the y direction. We've done that with combination of the flip matrix, the uh, f uh, Z unit, X unit, and Y unit vectors here. What we want to do now is create a series of points that are undulating or floating in space and make a surface out of that. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and use the Z unit vector. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this out. And again, as always, because we're creating a new definition, you probably want to do a save as and refer to this say as an undulating surface uh, image sampler, something along that lines, so that you don't destroy your definition that we've used up to this point. Let's go ahead and select those two unused ones because we want to move the points vertically in the Z unit. So I'm going to delete those out of there. And I'm going to go ahead and use the actual Z unit vector as my move. We're back to having the fins vertically, which is great, except we actually don't even want to make fins out of this. So we're going to go ahead and delete out the loft and the vertical lines component. Uh, we're going to turn back on the move. And what you should see, if you turn back on our original points, is you should see a base set of XY points and an undulating set of points in the vertical. Now, if we want to magnify the impact, we're going to control that with our uh, domain here. In particular, the A input of the domain controls the maximum displacement. If I change that to say five units, you'll see that the displacement becomes magnified five times. To play around with that or have a lot of impact, let's go ahead and replace that stagnant number with a number slider. So go to parameters, input, and number slider. We're going to double click and change it. Lower limit might be something like 0.1. And upper limit, let's go ahead and set that to say something like 10. And we're going to go ahead and wire that in. Delete out the old panel. And set this to just one while we add it to the group. There we go. So this is going to become our, our domain start as it's labeled. I'm going to relabel this as uh, max displacement. And as we go ahead and slide that, you'll see that that displacement increases and decreases proportionally. So, all right, we're no longer really interested in the, uh, the bottom surface points, so we can turn that off. We go back up here to these points component, right click, turn that preview off. But we do want to create a surface out of this series, this grid of points. So to do that, let's go to surface. We're going to go ahead and freeformed and surface from points. Now the points that we're going to use make the surface from come from this moved set of points. It's the geometry in particular that's coming out of the move. And then the u value is um, the va uh, points in the u direction, and i is the interpolated surface, which right now is set for false. What we need to do is we need to dictate what is the uh, u and v direction within here. And that has to do, remember, with x, y, z, u, v, w relationship of a surface relative to the um, XYZ plane. In particular, every surface has a UVW uh, coordinate system that is relative to that surface. This component is asking which direction is the U, and you tell that by telling the number of points in one direction over the other. Now remember, when we create an image uh, with here, we're actually dictating the number of cells. But you'll see that the first cell, the cell is technically the space between two columns. So if I have one cell, I actually have two columns of points that contain or make up that cell. If I have two cells, I have three columns of points. Three cells is four. You'll see that it's always one more column of points than the number of cells. So we can't just simply wire in the width saying there are 50 points in the x direction. It's actually going to be 50 uh, plus 1 extra. So let's go ahead and wire that into the U input. You'll see the component goes red. But if we go right click and type an expression, use the expression of X plus 1 to make up for that one extra column of points. And of course, the component goes, throws an error. Let's go to expression, whoop, undo whatever I just did there, which was the simplify. Let's change that expression to X minus 1. Let's try that. And that doesn't seem to work either. 
Oh, my apologies. We're going to go back to set up the X plus one. But the issue is the different wires. And the issue in particular is that this is asking just for a lump sum of points. Our points are coming in um, as several different groups. And remember, graphs oper operations work per list. Here, each column is organized by list. We've talked about this several times over, and we'll reiterate one more time. At the 50th, 51st point, the 50 index number, we start a new list, okay? Grasshopper really wants to, to perform this operation per list. We only want one surface. We don't want one surface for each of these for each of these columns. So we want this just to be one massive lump of points. To do that, to get them out of individual lists and into one massive list, we're going to flatten this information. We could flatten it coming out of the move, so right click and flatten there. But that's going to flatten it every time we use it. And we don't know what we're going to do in the future. So let's instead flatten it coming into the P before the surface grid uh, component actually operates. That way we're only flattening it coming into this component. If we want to use these points elsewhere, they'll still be organized by those lists. We're going to right click, flatten there. And sure enough, our component goes gray. Remember, the expression is x plus 1 here. Now the points make it difficult to see, so we're going to right click, turn off those. And the surface is a little bit difficult just because of the way that the uh, preview is happening. We can go in here and try to magnify it. And you can start to see a little bit more uh, as a result in there. Or we can go ahead and bake it. So baking is the operation of turning grasshopper data into Rhino data. The good side about baking is you can click on it and do things in Rhino with it. The downside to break it, baking it is you break the parametric link. You've gone ahead and kind of created a snapshot of the definition at that point and what the result is. If I make changes to here in, uh, earlier on in the definition, those changes will not be shown up in the baked Rhino object, okay? To bake an object, simply right click and go to this little egg thing called bake. It'll tell you the different layers you currently have. I'm just gonna randomly select one. You're able to group things if there are multiple things. Here it's just a single surface, so there's nothing to be able to group, no reason to group anything. We're gonna go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that preview off. And there you can start to see the surface. It might be a little bit difficult if I'm not in the shaded mode. And you can start to see what's happening. Now the dark areas are higher and the lighter areas are lower. We might want to inverse that. To inverse that, what we're going to do is not use the remapped values or swap the minimum maximum so we still get this magnitude. We're going to go ahead and just replace the swap the A and B input of our domain turn back on the visibility of our grasshopper surface. Now you'll see we're getting the opposite of that. I'm going to move the rhino surface out of the way for a moment. So you'll see we're getting the opposite of that where the things that were lighter are higher and the things that are darker are pushed down lower. I'm going to right click and bake that. And there you go, you have two surfaces that are informed by the image where anything that is lighter in the image and this second one is raised up, anything that's darker is pushed down. And the opposite is true with the original image. Anything that's darker is pulled up, anything lighter is pushed down. But we've now created an undulated surface based off of a given image. Um, we can change the variables and the size and all that kind of stuff. To do that, simply let's move this surface out of the way. Let's say we want to increase the overall size. I'm going to turn back on the preview for a moment. If we want to increase the overall size, we have to do two operations. First off, we have to actually increase the overall physical dimension. And we're going to go ahead and increase that to 50, say, by uh, 100 by 100. And this might slow down your computer like it's done for mine, because if you double a two-dimensional object, You've doubled the width and you double the height, which in turn means you've made it four times the size. So you're now creating four times the number of calculations. And as you can see from mine, it doesn't seem so very much like that. We might be a little bit frozen. We'll see what happens here. There we go. We're back. But you'll also see that we're getting a tiling effect that's happening. The reason we're getting a tiling effect that's happening is because we've increased the size to 0, 100 but our image domain is still set to 0 to 50, 0 to 50. So when it hits that 50 point, it just returns or remaps, repeats that image for the remainder 50. What we're going to do <coughs> instead is change our domain to match our size, which now is 0 to 100, 0 to 100. Hit OK. 
it'll stretch the size of the image. You have to remember anytime you change the overall size of the image, you also have to change the image's domain so that it stretches or fills the entire surface properly. Again, we can play around with our maximum displacement to give it less or more articulation. And last but not least, we can go ahead and bake this. Put a slightly different layer and turn the preview off there. <clears throat> there you go. So that is how I'm gonna flip these surfaces in Rhino so that the normal surface is facing up. These surfaces are white, that one's green. That's how you can go ahead and create an undulating surface based off of the grayscale values of a given image that you are sampling for its brightness.